So a couple of weeks ago, the new Beats Studio Pro headphones came out and I gotta be honest, I wasn't really planning on reviewing them, but then I decided to pick up the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and I kinda had to pick up a pair. Let me explain, let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what is up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So like I said in the intro, I pick up the Samsung Galaxy Fold 5 a little over a week ago. And so far I'm really, really enjoying it. If you wanna see my initial review, by the way, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. Anyway, because I'm primarily an Apple user and I've been using iPhones for the past couple of years, my entire ecosystem is kind of based around that meaning that my daily drivers in terms of headphones have been my trusty old AirPods Pro 2s. But as much as I love using them with my Apple products, they're not that great to use on Android phones. I mean, they will work, but with limited functionality and you can definitely tell that they're not made for Android. Now, because I'm switching back and forth between my Apple devices and my shiny new Android, I needed something that works on both platforms. Enter the new Beats Studio Pro. Not only do they integrate seamlessly with both Apple and Android, they even offer a bit of extra functionality on Android devices using the USB-C to USB-C cable. But before we get into all of that, let's have a quick look at what's in the box. The packaging looks nice and minimal. Apple's hand is definitely visible there. And if you don't know, back in 2014, Apple made its biggest acquisition, purchasing Beats Music and Beats Electronics for the hefty sum of $3 billion. So yeah, it's unsurprising that the packaging looks a little Apple-esque, if you will. I love how these come already stored inside the travel pouch, which by the way, is a huge plus for me. Too often headphones come in a soft bag these days, which is kind of useless, or they come in these huge hard shell cases that would take up half of your backpack. This is what I call a happy medium. It's not a hard shell per se, but it feels sturdy enough. And because of its compact size, it slides right into something like my Peak Design Everyday Backpack, leaving plenty of space for other stuff. Documentation, we love to ignore that. Some stickers, I know some people get a kick out of those. Personally, I'm not really a sticker kind of guy, but you know, they're here. Inside the pouch, we find a 3.5 millimeter jack, which is great for things like editing or gaming on the go, where you really don't want any latency or to hook it up to things like in-flight entertainment. It also comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable, which funnily enough, it's not just for charging. This cable actually unleashes some extra functionality for these headphones, but I will get back to that later on in the video. Both cables can be stowed away nicely in the compartments inside the pouch. And on the opposite side, there's another zippered compartment, giving you some options to store, you know, adapters or other small items. I went for the deep brown color. I wasn't sure if I would like it in person, but I actually really do. Black was a little too common for me. I'm not really a fan of white headphones and the navy ones kind of make the plastic look even more plasticky, if that makes sense. And that brings me to one of the most obvious downsides of these headphones. We might as well get that out of the way right now. They really are made primarily out of plastic, which you can see and feel. And for a pair of $350 headphones, I would have expected the build quality to be a little better. The plastic creaks with every move and the buttons make a cheap clicking noise every time you press them, which can be quite annoying, especially when you're wearing them. The same is true for the hinges of the folding mechanism. I love that these fold down, unlike a lot of other headphones like the AirPods Max, like the Sony XM5s, but every time I fold these, I feel like I'm gonna break them, which makes me wonder about the longevity. The upgraded foam on the ear cups, which Beats calls Ultra Plush, does feel really nice and soft. The material used is engineered leather, which is a fancy way of saying fake leather and really could mean anything. Beats partnered with designer Samuel Ross to quote unquote elevate the design, but to me, they look awfully similar to the Beats Studio 3, which are now six years old. Anyway, it's a nice design that still looks modern today, so I'm not complaining. I think they look great. In terms of comfort, I think this is really subjective and it depends on all kinds of things like the shape of your head and your ears. The Beats do fit comfortably over my giant head with some extra room to spare to extend them even further. I have relatively small ears, so they just about fit inside the cup, but because the cups are so shallow, my ears tend to hit the drivers, which is not ideal. If you have bigger ears, I think these will become a hybrid of over-the-ear and on-ear headphones. None of that really bothers me though. What does make these slightly uncomfortable for me to wear, for extended periods of time at least, is that they clamp onto my head with some force and the bottom of the cup 
presses down on my jaw, which can get a little painful over time. Having said that, these are of course brand new and I'm sure the pressure will ease over a couple of days or weeks of wearing these. Now, while that tight fit might get uncomfortable on a long flight or something like that, it is actually a good thing in the gym, which is one of the places where I'll be using these the most. I took them with me on my morning workout and they didn't slip off once. In fact, they literally didn't move the whole time. Now, some of the things I mentioned might sound a little negative, but there's plenty of good stuff to report on these headphones as well. First and foremost, there is the fact that these work both on Apple and Android devices, thanks to what they call the dual ecosystem chipset. And that works really well. Pairing out of the box is as easy as you're used to from Apple products. You just turn them on, hold them close to your device, and boom, they show right up and you're taken through a super simple setup process. The controls on the headphones work the same for both devices and again are super straightforward. And they're tactile. I do prefer that over the touch-based controls we see on a lot of modern headphones. I like to feel what I'm pressing and that is definitely the case with these. You just press up for volume up, down to lower the volume, press once to play or pause the songs, press twice for the next track, three times for previous track, and a long press will activate the voice assistant. A little side note for Android users, if you're using a brand that doesn't have Google Assistant as a default, like this Samsung Galaxy Fold here, which uses Bixby, you do need to go into your settings first and make sure to clear the default settings and then set Google Assistant as your default assistant. Or Bixby will show up every time you long press that button. And that's pretty much it for media controls. On the other side, we have the on and off button, but that is also used to toggle between the noise control profiles. You can further customize the controls from within the Beats app. For example, you can choose to have the double press only toggle between noise cancellation or transparency if you never use the off option. And you can customize your call controls. Speaking of calls, Beats claims that the microphones on these headphones have improved, and I'm sure that's true, but they still sound pretty mediocre compared to something like the AirPods Pro 2. They're fine for quick casual phone calls, but they wouldn't be my first pick for longer or important calls. Now for the most important part, the audio quality. How do these actually sound for playing music? Whenever I tried Beats headphones in the past, I always found them to be too heavy on the bass. I mean, it was their signature sound, I guess, but it wasn't for me. So I was very happy to hear that this is no longer the case. To me, the Beats sound a lot more balanced now. They do still have that pronounced bass, but there's more emphasis on the mids and the highs now as well and they sound more detailed. For me personally, they went a bit overboard with the treble, which can get a bit harsh and sibilant, and I wish there was a way to tune these things a little, but there's no EQ option in the app. So the profiles Beats gives us is what we have to work with. That's right, I said profiles, plural, because the Beat Studio Pros come with DAC mode over USB-C, which means you can listen to your favorite music in lossless audio in three different profiles. And that is where Android actually has a leg up over iOS because this does not work with a USB-C to lightning cable. Now, I have a feeling this might change very soon as the new iPhone 15 lineup will most likely come with a USB-C port, but for now, this feature only works on Android. Another thing that only works on Android, and that's gonna be kind of a biggie for a lot of people, and that's Multipoint Connect, which is so weird considering that this product is owned by Apple, but again, this might be fixed with a future firmware update. On the flip side, head tracking and spatial audio seem to be exclusive to the iPhone. Now, apparently not many people care about this, but I guess I'm one of those few people that actually do love spatial audio and head tracking. So I'm actually a little bit bummed out that this is not available on the Android. Battery life on these is pretty good. Beats advertises 40 hours, but that is only with ANC turned off and in the best conditions. And since most of us will be making use of ANC all the time, 24 hours of use would be a more accurate estimate. I wish these would auto pause and auto play when taking them on or off but they don't. You will have to pause them yourself before taking them off, which is a bit of a bummer. Same goes for turning them on and off. It would have been so nice to see them turn off when you fold them down and pack them up. All right, let's get to the point. Are these worth the $350 price tag? Well, that depends. Are these the best headphones you can buy for the money? Probably not. The Sony XM5s or even the Bose 700s, in my opinion, offer better overall quality and you can probably get them at a better deal too. I still think these are gonna sell really well for two main reasons. One, because they're Beats and a lot of people love the design and the brand in general, and they'll wanna upgrade to these for their added functionality. And two, and this is the main reason I'll be hanging on to them myself, is portability. 
While other brands seem to be moving away from folding designs, the Beats fold down really nice and compact and they come with this lovely small case that feels like way less of a commitment to carry and that I'll gladly toss into any bag before leaving the house. Guys, I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for some links to videos you might wanna watch next.